After the re-gauge from 10 and a quarter to the now unique 14 and a quarter, the council made the move to bring new locomotives. While one was a replica of the Flying Scotsman, the people of Seven Land would deliver not one, but two propane-powered locomotives. My name is Dylan, and this is the history of the Seven Lamb Rios. Shortly after the railway was extended and re-gauged, the council decided it would be an idea to bring in some new locomotives. Whilst the chaps at RNA Development constructed their Flying Scotsman, the council got in touch with the chaps at Seven Lamb Limited and put on order one of their new Rio Grande locomotives. The Rios were built to resemble the C-16 Class 280 locomotives of the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. This class of seven lamb locomotives met the need for switch on and go motive power for commercial miniature railways. They were built to withstand heavy daily usage with their frames being constructed with seven eighths of an inch thick steel plate. Their overall length was 19 foot and eight inches. They were two foot and 10 inches in width with a height to the top of the whistle of four foot and six inches. Number one, or Koenigswinter, as she would be known later in her life, would be the second of this type of locomotive, but the first type for 15 inch gauge. However, the chaps at Seven Lamb had to re-gauge her before delivering her, as they discovered the gauge was not 15 inch. Once this was resolved, she was delivered to Cleethorpes on the 4th of July, 1972. She was powered by a 1600cc Ford petrol engine, which was converted to operate on propane gas. Located in her bogey tender, this drove the hydraulic pump which was also located in the tender, which in turn powered a hydraulic motor in the engine. All this power was then transmitted to the second couple axle through triple chains. The speed she was designed to run at was 7 miles per hour. The driver of the locomotive was also provided with a seat on the tender, which had the gas tank immediately behind it. The locomotive was smartly turned out in a gloss black livery with polished aluminium cylinder ends along with silver painted smoke box, chimney, running plates, cab roof and a tender frame. The boiler was trimmed in stainless steel and the side rods were red. A tall whistle, polished bell and a headlamp were also provided. A cow catcher was also fitted to the front buffer beam. She did not carry any number but the wording Rio Grande on the side of her tender in white lettering. When the council ordered this locomotive in January 1972, it was at the cost of £4,350. Now, let's have a look at number two, or Ross Castle as she would be known later in life. She was the first of the Mark II version of the Seven Lamb Limited Rio Grande 280 and depicted the Denver and Rio Grande C16 280 locomotives in its original wood-burning state. The Mark II variation was built from 1978 and while generally similar, the most obvious differences from the Mark I were the balloon chimney, large square headlight mounted on the top of the smoke box, curved smoke box handrail and a modified cab with curved windows. The council ordered her in February 1978 to replace the problematic Flying Scotsman at the cost of £10,758.60. As with the original Rio Grande, the new locomotive was powered by a 1600cc Ford petrol engine, converted to run on propane gas. This locomotive was smartly turned out in a maroon livery, with polished aluminium cylinder ends along with silver painted smoke box, chimney, running plates, cab roof and tender frame. The boiler was trimmed in brass and the side rods were red. A tall whistle, polished bell and a headlamp were also provided. A cow catcher was also fitted to the front buffer beam. She was numbered 800 on the sides of her cab and the wording Rio Grande was carried on the tender, both in white lettering. The headlamp also carried the number 800 on either side. Both locomotives provided loyal service to the railway for a number of years, although the original Rio did spend some time out of action after the railway was reduced to one train operation in 1981. Then, in early 1991, they were both passed to the new operators, the Cleethorpes Coastlight Railway. And over the winter of 1991 to 1992, the original Rio Grande was rebuilt with a narrow gauge outline, with all the American features removed. After a rebuild, she was given the number one and painted green, before being named Koenigswinter in August 1992, 
after Cleethorpe's twin town in Germany. By 1993, the Mark II Rio Grande became the number two of the railway and, like her sister, was rebuilt with a narrow gauge outline, but was turned out in a lovely blue livery. In the June 1995 issue of Railway World, a picture appeared of number two with a caption underneath, reading that she was named Ross Castle, but she carried no nameplates at this time. She was then sold to Terry Stanhope at Arvington, West Yorkshire and left Cleethorpes on the 24th of October 1995. Only to be acquired by Austin Moss in July 1996 and moved to Scarisbrick in Lancashire and then to Windmill Farm near Burskoff Bridge in February 1997. That same year Koenigsvinter received another rebuild once again, changing the appearance completely as it became a 282 with large side tanks and an enclosed cab. The tender was discarded and at the same time was re-gauged to 15 inch. The power was now supplied by a Lister SL3 engine. By June 2001, number two had been named Neptune. In Austin's ownership, Neptune had a rather nomadic life. Being loaned to Nosley Safari Park near St Helens in 2000 and the Lakeside Miniature Railway at Southport in 2003. In 2003, Koenigswinter was obtained by Austin Moss, exchanging her for a steam outline locomotive named Batterson. Over the winter of 2003 to 2004, Neptune's appearance was transformed back to a Rio Grande, however, now looking like a Mark I, using the bodywork from another 7 Lamb Rio Grande, which had operated at Longleat Safari Park since April 1975. This same Rio would arrive to Cleethorpe's Coast Light Railway in 2019 as an 082, but that's for another video. With her new bodywork fitted, Neptune became known as number 362, now in a livery of black and silver with red side rods. However, she no longer had a name. In 2006, she was rebuilt for a Ford diesel engine with hydraulic transmission and was loaned out that summer to the Lakeside Miniature Railway in Southport. In 2010, she was sold to Billing Aquadrone Railway near Northampton, leaving Windmill Farm just a couple of days before the new 15-inch gauge railway opened on the 27th of March 2010. In late 2017, Cunningswinter would leave Windmill Farm for a new life as Austin traded her for Rachel, a regular site on the CCLR since she arrived in 2018. Her nameplates were removed before leaving Windmill Farm and she would be renamed to Rachel. She would run occasionally on the railway when the main service loco required attention. She still lives there to this day. We hope you enjoyed this journey throughout the history of the Rio Grande locos of the 14 and a quarter inch gauge era. If you did, why not give this video a like and leave a comment about your favourite part? If you haven't yet, why not subscribe for more content like you are seeing now? If you'd like to see some footage of these two locomotives in action, why not head over to our throwback playlist filled with interesting footage of these locomotives in service. Ah!